Good news, my kind viewer. Great news, even. Phenomenal, outstanding, incredible news. First of all, I'm about to temporarily solve the 21st century problem which you no doubt face on a regular basis. Uh, that dilemma is, of course, what should I watch? I don't know what to watch. Well, this fine evening, I busted out my Criterion Blu-ray of uh, The Last Days of Disco by Whit Stillman, who I had never seen a film by before, and I loved it. Lots to chew on, lots of fun. I'm interested in the novel at this point, although, you know, a novel about disco lacks the sound that makes disco as fun as it is. Anyway, uh, I'm still interested in it because obviously the narrative around the characters is a lot more... Is he ever going to get to the point, you might be wondering, if you're new here? And yes, I am, but, you know, it's you, you gotta be along for the ride. Uh, you know, you can't just rush in and, you know, give me my stimulation and, you know, get out. No, you have to take it easy. That way you're more fulfilled. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I recommend The Last Days of Disco. And that leads me into my next point. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might have noticed how movie-obsessed I've become. Uh, and if not, then you know, I will point you in the direction of um, a video I made called the Gen 5 OU Chain Chomp Massacre, uh, which is, of course, after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I thought that was very obvious, but <laughs> I guess not. Um, yeah, so I want to make movies with my life. You know how, like, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know how, like, a couple times a year I'll have, like, a, a video that's, like, a complete psychedelic freakout? Um, and you're like, oh, this is, like, cinematic. You know, it's, it's like, edited and everything. Um, and then it goes into some strange places, usually dark places. I really uh, enjoy the video where um, Markov gets uh, super hacked by Rockslide. Uh, the greatest uh, advance OU game in history, I think it's called. Um, inspired by Blue Velvet. Anyway, so the reason I say all that is that I want to make movies with my life and I'm trying to make a movie, like a real actual feature length movie and all. So in a couple months there will be a, a teaser trailer for that uh, so we can get crowdfunding and stuff like that, etc, etc. So, I just got a text. Nope, that, that can wait, whatever it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I say that now, and I'm gonna look at it, and it's like, oh no, I should have answered that right away. Um, yeah, I'm really leaning into the whole, this video is like a podcast with occasional mild visual elements, but we are going to actually click the replay on the screen. We might even get into several replays anyway. Anyway, so the point being that uh, besides just earning your donations for the film uh, itself, which, you know, I'm trying to spread awareness for uh, as early as possible, so you can get excited for that when it rolls around in May, and you're gonna be like, oh wow, this is like live action, there's no Pokemon Showdown in this. Um, yeah, I also wanted to ask you, my kind viewer, what kinds of videos you would like more from me? Uh, you know, I'm open to trying new things, or old things I hate, like laddering. <laughs> um, I'm not totally selling out, because I'm not going to do something I despise, obviously. But sometimes uh, someone has a really, really good idea for a video, and I'm like, why, why didn't I think of that? I'd love to, uh, I would love to do that. So, yeah, give me all your video suggestions. Lay them on me. There's no video suggestion too stupid. Um, you know, if someone says, hey, you should make a video where you just praise Gen 5 OU, and if you do that, I will give a thousand dollars to your movie. Guess who's praising Gen 5 OU for a couple uh, hours? Anyway, uh, so that was all the stuff that's unrelated to the video itself, but it's very important uh, to BKC as a whole. Anyway, so speaking of things I know people enjoy, uh, this is a recap of some tournament games, or maybe just one tournament game because it's late. I don't know how, uh, how much energy I'm going to have for all of them, but yeah, I'll split them into separate videos, it's fine. Because I don't want to like rush over them, you know, um, and not give them their due, because there's so much to chew on. Anyway, so a few months ago, I decided to sign up for SPL, for those who don't know, Smogan Premier League, Smogan's biggest team tournament, uh, and generally a great experience because people love playing team tournaments because you get to hang out with other people and yeah. Uh, so I decided, yeah, you know what, I, I was feeling down, 
And I was like, you know what, it might be good to have some camaraderie uh, in a group setting like this. Uh, and yeah, uh, and worse comes to worse, I get some videos out of it. Uh, and worse did come to worst because the tournament's not even over. But our team was so bad that uh, it's after six weeks. Okay, realistically, after five weeks we were out, but like... You know, after the 6th, we're officially out. We are bad. So I was like, yep, time to make this video. <laughs> uh, anyway, so SPL is best of one, and I hate best of one. I think it's so bad. I think it's a really bad joke. I hate best of one more than I hate Gen 5 OU. Yes, I said it. If every other tier in SPL was best of one and Gen 5 OU was best of three, I would sign up for Gen 5 OU. Try me. M next next season, if, S if Gen 5 OU is the only tier that's best of three, I will sign up for it. Uh, um, you know, if there's another tier that's best of three, then, you know, that would be better, obviously. Not counting RBY, of course. I do, I think, in fact, RBY's best of three is amazing. Um, but it's not really a tier I enjoy playing on a regular basis. That's just a preference thing. I think it's a very competitive tier. Anyway. Uh, so this year I signed up for Advance and DPP, and I really I was fine with playing either. I really wanted to play uh, DPP, and then I landed on a team with my buddy Jirachi, who has never played a full season of DPP in SPL. Neither have I, I guess. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll play Advance. It's because I lo I love Advance too. I was quickly reminded how awful any tier is in Best of One, and I'll stop harping on Best of One. Uh, here because I'd rather make a whole video about how bad best of one is And how bad the arguments against it are Jesus they're bad But um, yeah, it's a very stressful environment um, And I was signing up for this tournament to take it easy. Uh, I was thinking oh, no, it'll be fun, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, how I've been away for a while, and I, I guess I just forgot uh, How foolish of me, but you know the preseason in SPL has that effect on people it tends to make them forget how I mean, okay, it can be amazing, too, but it can also be really stressful. Um, yeah, so best of one, bad. And the basic idea going into the season uh, I had was that... Uh, I don't remember uh, what I said in my last SPL video exactly, because I did, like, my SPL 11 review, I think, if you want to go check that one out. And the basic idea was that um, I really am not a big fan of prep, and the reason I'm not a big fan of prep is not that I think it's dishonorable or something, but I think that it turns the game into a full-time job way too much. Uh, if you really want to keep up with everything. Um, you know, the whole opponent-specific... I'm not really a big fan of that, especially when the hardcore matchup fishing comes into play. That's just not how I like to play the game. That's not what I value in it. Um, which is personal preference, and I would hope that people would be okay with that. Anyway, so point being, in um, last time around, I was like, I'm just going to stick to my guns. I'm going to use Skarm Bliss. I'm going to figure out what takes on Skarm Bliss traditionally. I'm going to structure my team so that even if they bring anti-Skarm Bliss, I can take advantage of that. Like the super easy example that was popular at the time, I'm going to use Magdal, and that'll shut down Skarm Bliss. And I was like, okay, well, if they use Magdal, I'm going to have a Hariyama, and Hariyama just completely destroys Magdal. So, kind of have your cake, eat it too situation. That became my motto. This time around, I wanted to switch it up a bit more. Um, partially because I, get, I was less, like, emotionally invested into being super perfect uh, each time. And I, I just wanted to mix it up and not have to deal with, you know, the headache of, you know, how do... Well, I'll, here's let's use the week one... Um, game as an example. I'm using a team style I consider really bad. Like, most of the, I've made a lot of videos about how not good, I think, physical offense, magneton offense, you know, mixed offense, those kinds of things, I think they're really, really terrible. Um, but in this SPL, I used a bunch of stuff. Not that stuff that I think is outright bad all the time, necessarily, but just kind of going out of my way to use stuff that wouldn't be expected from me, which I don't think is a good strategy in and of itself. And I also want to make another video on prep stuff in general, I guess, because a lot of the logic used in these kinds of um, 
and these kinds of situations are, I have used Suicune three times, therefore I can use Suicune a fourth time, or therefore I can't use Suicune anymore, and both those strands of logic are really bad. Or uh, even worse, and this happens all the time, someone will say, I have not used Suicune yet, and I'm just throwing out Suicune as an example. I have not used Suicune yet in five weeks, therefore I can use it in week six because it won't be expected. Or, I can't, or it's so obvious for me to use Suicune after not having used it for five weeks. Right? I've seen both of those used, and both of them are equally erroneous, which is why I want to make that video on prep itself. Uh, so, yeah, here I just wanted to use, I definitely pressed the fuck it button a lot more than I ever have in tournaments before, just because the idea of you know, trying to find something that I would consider all around good was so exhausting when considering you know the extreme lengths I know a lot of people go to in order to counter team people, which is again a lot more feasible in best of one. Um, it's not exclusive to best of one, of course, but I think it's a lot more palatable in best of three, uh, which is an objectively superior format. So um, I'm just imagining you know, someone in the comments going, I'm five minutes in and the battle hasn't started yet, what's going on? Uh, I enjoy those. Anyway, so we're setting the stage still. Yeah, so the team I'm using, I consider it like, I don't know, it's okay, but I don't think it's consistent. I think it struggles with so much. If someone in the comments was like, your team you know, sucks against Mixments and Moltres and Starmie and Dugtrio, and I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, I don't think that's necessarily an excuse for using a bad... I, I don't think it's terrible or unusable or anything, but it's not what I would consider a, you know, consistently good team. Which means, to me, it, to me, that's not... It means it's not a good team. If it can't consistently win. Um, you know, regardless of... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop myself before I go on a whole super unrelated rant. Yeah, it would be really bad if I started doing that now, right? Um, but yeah, so the team I'm using is uh, Lead Suicune, Magneton, Snorlax, Metagross, DD Mence, and Sub Salic Heracross. And the idea is my opponent is Arctic, who I'd been away from the game for a while, so I had no idea who he was. And uh, I just knew ABR was his manager, and I knew that apparently he loved to match up fish. And I was like, oh, good, that's really fun. Um, and ABR has been my manager in SPL before, so he knows how stringent I am about like hating most most teams in advance, just because it's like, how can people use this? It gets destroyed by Skarmory or Starmie or Salmons or like 16,000 different threats. And uh, then you would say to that, well, Kev, doesn't that mean that there's like a kind of a limited pool of what you would consider a consistently good team? And the answer is yes! Absolutely, that's the case. Um, matter of fact, I felt a lot more free in DPP than in advance for this reason. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so I, I was toying with a lot of stuff. Uh, and I, I don't understand what people say. Oh, best of three makes, more, uh, makes it uh, tougher to prep. It's like, I was building five to ten teams a week without even, sometimes more, without even trying, you know, just a bunch of stuff popping in my head, so I, I, I don't know, it's such a terrible argument. So, point being, I was going through a lot of stuff, and eventually I settled on this team because it was the complete, because I'm so on record as saying this kind of thing is bad, um, and that I know that there's a lot of uh, a bunch of players who like to fish for things like no Heracross, for example. Uh, and you know, so I, not only would it be things like Heracross, which is completely cleave through unprepared teams like little else, but also a bunch of um, other Pokemon that are just never ever seen from me. You know, Suicune is kind of rare, you know, offensive Suicune at least from me. Snorlax non existent because I hate Snorlax, I think it's so bad. It's not that Snorlax is bad, it's that making a good team with it is nearly impossible. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of DD Mence either, but um, I, I don't mind DD Mence though. It's. Yeah, anyway, so I just figured, well, I'm going to make a team with all these guys uh, just because the. First of all, it's a, they have a bunch. They have good synergy together. So if I'm aggressive enough and very you know, aware of the positioning and things I need to do to win, then. 
I will be able to um, overcome difficult matchups uh, just by being more aggressive. Right? The problem is that these difficult matchups for physical offense are plentiful, and <laughs> a lot of the Pokemon that physical offense struggles with, you know, in and of themselves, are often paired with each other. You know, your Gengars and Moltres and Dugtrios and things like that. Um, <laughs> you know, Spikes and Mixpence. Good lord. Um, but yeah, so I figure I just have to be really aggressive, and yeah, uh, and for a best of one scenario then it's not the worst case. Especially with the fish-heavy uh, preparation methodology that I knew was a common of my opponent and his uh, manager. Arctic's a great player, by the way. I've been watching his games and really like his stuff. He's um, very, very solid in his um, overall game plans, which I always appreciate, as opposed to turn-by-turn you know, short-sightedness. That's the biggest thing. You always gotta look ahead. So, Arctic, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to say. I just, you know, I wanted to be unexpected. And the biggest thing here is that for all the defensive deficiencies this team has, normally I don't like uh, those kinds of teams where it's like, uh, like DD spam with Titar, Gara, Mens, then you have your Magneton, Metagross, and like Snorlax, right? Like, you can say, oh, you can be aggressive, with these teams and you know, overwhelm the opponent. I tend to not like them very much uh, because I don't think the sweepers are strong enough, explosive enough to cut through most good teams. They don't have the power or the speed or both. <laughs> you know, it's so common to see those, you know, yeah, I'm gonna overwhelm the opponent's physical wall and then you just get blanked by Swamper, like every time. It's ridiculously easy. You know, you remove the Skarmory with Magneton, and then the one spike it gets, and their 16 other thousand uh, Pokemon that destroy physical sweepers just stuff you anyway. I mean, this kind of this team gets you know, ruined by, like, Blissey and stuff. It's embarrassing. But the reason I wanted to go with this was not just because, LOL, he's going to fish for no Heracross, but because Heracross is the one sweeper which... Um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Kind of splits the difference, right? Because it's so strong that if there's one sweeper that's going to completely turn the game around against almost any kind of team, it's Heracross. Because the other Pokemon, uh, they're relying on stabs that are like hidden powers and rock slides and, you know, then unstabbed earthquakes. And, you know, Metagross has a strong meteor mash, of course, but it's got its own issues. So, uh, I'm... It's really tough to get going. Whereas Heracross, with Sub Salic, it's boosting, it's using a 120 base power Mega Horn. Uh, it's got a Swords Dance as opposed to Dragon Dance, and it's still boosting its speed with Salic to outrun the entire metagame. And it's even stronger because of Swarm, so Mega Horn is just cleaving through things. So, and uh, so whenever there's something like a Dug Trio or whatever, and you think, oh, I'm going to punish that with my DD Mence, and they send in their like 16th DD Mence counter, and you're like, well, that was stupid, so much for a Dug Trio punish. Heracross is that Pokemon that can you know, really turn you know, bad matchups around like very little else. So that was ultimately why I felt all right about this team, despite its flaws, which you know definitely make it inconsistent. You know, to say nothing of Megahorn accuracy. Now, when I was testing, I was like, all right, if the potential is there for you know a solid offensive attack. And the unexpected factor is obviously big, but Heracross uh, just has such game-breaking power that it's going to make the whole thing worth it. Anyway, almost 20 minutes into the video, we're going to start this game, and I'm going to check that text real quick to see if it was something important. Uh, I don't think so. The tension is building. Whatever. Uh, this... Okay, yeah, no, it wasn't as important as I thought. Oh, that's disappointing. Anyway. <laughs> I was like, oh, is this something important? It's like, oh, no. It's someone sending something stupid. <laughs> Not that that can't be important in its own way. Anyway, yeah, I think this battle is definitely going to be the only one in this video because of that long but very necessary preamble uh, to set the tone. Uh, and the setting. Okay, we got a T-Tar lead against a Suicune lead. Also, I am very proud of my nicknames, and I think they're awesome. So, 
Uh, this one is based on those stupid gifts that my buddy Jester and I have found on Discord. Okay, so uh, this is an offensive Suicune lead, and it basically just wants to bruise teams without Blissey really hard. Really hard, and teams with Blissey are going to let in my physical attackers, Metagross and Snorlax, and then we find out what their physical walls are, you know, maybe I get an early trap off on Skarmory, and then we go from there. Uh, so, yeah, Suicune is just going to call mine on this first turn, because T-Tar, you know, even if T-Tar stays and does something stupid like Focus Punch, then it's like, alright, well, I have a plus one Suicune, and I'm going to hit something hard. And if T-Tar is staying in on Suicune, that means the Suicune is going to be threatening. So... I'm sure the follow-up surf will do some good. So, call mine, in comes Zapdos. I see it's faster because of sand, and I'm like, well, uh, Zapdos is a threat, and the thing with offensive teams like this is that the more you switch around without doing any damage, then you know, the worse off you're going to be. Like, if I go to, and here's one of the many issues of these kinds of teams, like, if I go to Snorlax here, then, like, Snorlax is going to take a big chunk from T-Bolt and Sand, not heal it off, and then, you know, run into T-Tar or Metagross or whatever, and then I'm switching out again without having done much damage. You know, the Zapdos is still healthy. So, uh, Weakening Zapdos is super helpful for my Metagross, and just, you know, limiting how it can switch in later. Um, yeah, because my Metagross has Rock Slide. It's four attacks to limit Charizard and Moltres doing dumb stuff on the Switch. But, um, yeah, it's also not going to KO from full. So, yeah, plus one Ice Beam is really, you know, un or, um, Bulkless Zapdos has a very good chance to die to San with Sand in the picture. And uh, either way, I just really want that big damage. So T-Bolt and Ice Beam and brings it down. It's going to live Sand. So we can still have full health. That's acceptable. I can uh, fire off a Surf later, switching into something like... Because uh, a lot of the rock resistance in the tier are things like Swampert and Metagross, uh, Claydol. And Suicune can come in against them. You know, it can take one more hit from them. If it comes in on a double switch, even better. Because then it can still take that hit later on. It can fire off another Surf. Great. Uh, it can even take a hit from T-Tar. Uh, you know, unless it's like Bandit or gets a DD first, obviously. But in general, it's, you know, in good enough health to be useful. So, yeah, Suicune half health, Zapdos at 12, which is, you know, wonderful. Now I can't switch into anything besides Earthquake. So, uh, now it's much better to switch to Snorlax. Like, yeah, I've got two Pokemon chunk, but I also really chunk the Zapdos as opposed to doing um, uh, nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, how do I say 16 things at once? It's uh, getting the most out of every single turn because your defensive constituency is so non-existent. <laughs> I mean, that T-Bolt would have stung even without the crit, but now with the crit, it's really bad. Um, yeah, uh, the set here is Curse, Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Self-Destruct. Uh, just to try and... To muscle through bulky Metagross more efficiently as opposed to just getting completely stonewalled by Protect variants. Because uh, uh, the DD Mence on this team is uh, Brick Break instead of Earthquake. Just because getting... Uh, DD Mence getting uh, owned by Blissey is the most embarrassing thing ever. And uh, full health T-Tar too, obviously. I mean, dropping Earthquake is terrible, don't get me wrong. I mean, being unable to hit Jirachi, like, ugh, horrible. I mean, Magneton's supposed to try and help with that. Um, and, like, Calm Mindsets can uh, just get bruised by everything. But, yeah, it's, a, you know, a really, really big trade-off to make. Uh, another form of inconsistency. But that's the general idea. Curse, uh, Quake, Shadow Ball, Boomlax uh, will muscle through Metagross more efficiently. So... Uh, sadly, I am not at high enough health to warrant cursing, and I don't have a body slam to throw out, so I decide just go for Shadow Ball, just in case the Zapdos decides, look, I am not going, well, if it has BP, then it would see I'm focus punching on a Baton Pass, and then you get into a whole, uh, whole, whole game of, oh, well, you know, he's going to, uh, not show baton pass because he knows I wouldn't focus punch anyway, so it makes no difference, so he may as well not reveal he has it. And, you know, stupid stuff like that. So you try to focus on the position. And the position is, I decide, okay, I'm going to Shadow Ball, I'm going to see what he goes to. 
Uh, because if he goes to T-Tar, I'm going to see if it's Lefties or Lum. And even if uh, I Shadow Ball into T-Tar and uh, it's Lefties, okay, I know it's Lefties, so that means it can't switch into something like my Magneton's Thunder Wave later on. That could be big. Um, and if it is Lum, then, you know, it's not healing off that damage. Uh, I'm really tempted to Boom. Um, one reason why I'm not is I don't know that there's not a Gengar on the other side. Uh, another is that uh, I might need the you know, Death Fodder later on to switch into. And chunking T-Tar or Metagross or whatever for 60-70% might be nice. But, you know, in... Um, on a team with such defensive fragility in the event that I face, you know, another special attacker, which is very likely on this team with offensive Zapdos, uh, then uh, I might need that extra Pokemon to sacrifice as opposed to that uh, chip damage that I'm not guaranteed lands in the right spot either. Uh, so Shadow Ball, because if there is a Gengar, then this would be a great place to go to it. Um, Especially if you have BP. So I decided Shadow Ball and, you know, not not get too risky. Because uh, worst, the worst case with Shadow Ball is still very manageable. Whereas if I self-destruct, I can go a lot more badly. So T-Tar comes in, no BP. And does nothing to Tar, but uh, it is Lefties. Or, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't have Lefties, so it's Lum. Almost certainly. Uh, it makes a great move and Earthquakes on the Metagross switch, because it's not going to KO Suicune, and Metagross is very commonly a backup to Suicune. And if I have something like Claydol, then it's not going to make much of a difference if I, uh, it Rock Slides or EQs anyway. So it's more about information, and the reward for hitting Metagross with EQ is really big. Um, and since a Snorlax is out of range of... Um, Snorlax is out of range of... Um, Rock Slide anyway, so the only benefit Rock Slide has in that one-on-one -on -one is the flinch chance, which, you know, is, of course, not insignificant, but realistically, with Earthquake, you're still going to chunk lax into range of everything, while also hitting the likelier occurrence that a Metagross is going to come in, you know, a very common lax partner. Um, so yeah, lot, lots of upside there, great move, and yeah. Uh, I think that was pretty much it. So now I just, uh, I'm going to chase it out. And I'm like, okay, that's very, almost certainly DD. So, uh, I think, yeah, the uh, last was also barely out of Brick Break range. Because I was like, is it, that might be a mixed tar. But I figured, you know, Metagross covers either way. So now in comes a Charizard on the Meteor Mash. Uh, I thought, oh, Rock Slide is uh, not, Rock Slide wasn't a good move there. It would be very silly if I did Rock Slide. Because then, like, a Swamper comes and it's like, oh, I could have Meteor Mashed that for a little more damage. Um, so Charizard, not something I really want to switch into. Um, oh, I also uh, don't stay in with Lax on T-Tar because t -tar's not really a threat. To You know, my endgame plans are going to be Heracross or Salamence at this point, and they're not afraid of T-Tar. So much better to keep Snorlax as Death Fodder than to blow it up and get, you know, very little return. Now I'm going to use that Snorlax as Death Fodder against this Charizard. I also see that the Charizard is not of lefties, so it is sub Pitaya Sunny Day. That is very significant. Um, because it, it means it's going to be sub Pattaya, Sunny Day, Fire Blast, or, you know, in this case, Flamethrower, because ABR always, uh, goes for the accuracy moves. And then the last move is, like, Overheat or Blast Burn. I mean, I think that's very unlikely with those are options. But I think, uh, HP Grass is the most common, uh, I think. It's, it's the most consistent in any case, because, you know, even beyond going for the sub Pattaya, Sunny setup, then you just got Fire Grass coverage, which gives a lot of teams trouble in and of itself, especially in Sand. Um, yeah, so, and if it was lefties, then it would be a lot more likely that it has Dragon Claw or Beat Up, or sorry, um, Beat Up is not relevant because I don't have a Blissey, but um, HP Ice, which has become a lot more popular. Fire Blast, HP Ice, uh, Brick Break, and Toxic. Um, yeah, Beat Up sometimes gets slotted in there over Toxic too, depending on the team. Um, or, you know, honestly, over beat up, too, because uh, Blissey doesn't really want to tango with it much, and you can overwhelm it with spikes and sand and stuff. But yeah, HP Ice has become a lot more popular, uh, but that's on Lefty's mix sets, um, which I was expecting Zard to have Lefty's at first, just because it's more popular and just because it's good into, you know, bulky Scar and Bliss stuff, which I like to use. So I'm, I'm glad to see that it's up a tie, because that means Mens can set up on it, and already that's... 
because it look, it's looking like his team is offensive. I mean, okay, yes, it's offensive. But also means he's going to be frail. Um, and that's big because that's exactly the kind of thing that Didi Mentz and Heracross clean up against uh, really well. So if I can position it, that Mentz, to set up late game, I mean, obviously there's going to be something else to stand in its way, but yeah. Um, then that could be the game. Uh, there's going to be a rock resist there for sure. Uh, you know, water, very likely. And then there's a, a lot of stuff that you could throw in there, you know, your special checks and whatnot. Um, yeah, so, but, but either way, Mence is really good against these kinds of things. And I'm, I have Pokemon weak to Charizard, you know, I've got Metagross and Magneton and Heracross. And so if I, uh, you know, get Mence in against the Zard late game, I'm thinking, alright, well, that could be it, so long as I sufficiently weaken the water. So, weakening the water is going to be a matter of getting uh, Metagross in again and firing off that Meteor Mash because Zapdos doesn't want to come in. Charizard not having lefties means it can't even switch in a Meteor Mash anymore because with lefties, it could switch in a Meteor Mash twice. That's one of the great things about Charizard. But without lefties and losing health and sand and not setting up Sunny Day, then it's going to you know, be in range. So, uh, that's really key to keep in mind. Ah, uh, oh, there was something else. Yeah, oh, this is a, a great example of Charizard um, using its defensive profile to great use. Because not only does it usually switch into two meter mashes, but taking damage is actually something it wants because it gets it closer to blaze range. So then it comes in late game with that great speed stat, and it's firing off... Because it's initially weaker than Moltres, but, you know, once it's switching to meter mash a couple times, or, like, you know, Celebi, Psychic, or Leech Seed, or whatever and it gets uh, into that low range, then late game it comes in, and yeah, it can't take hits anymore, but it's also hitting a lot, lot harder since it's got that plus one boost to its fire stab. So it's really, really chunking things. So, uh, Lax is gonna go down, and Zard is gonna take some more sand, so now it really can't switch into Meteor Mash. Um, so now Suicune comes in, out of HP Grass range, and I wanna find uh, if there's a special wall, because T-Tar, Z I mean Zapdos dies, so it's gonna, Suicune will force a, a reveal of another Pokemon, so that's wonderful. In comes Regice, cool Pokemon, uh, and I really like the especially offensive synergy on this kind of team, you know, provided uh, there's a way of getting through Blissey and friends, because it's not just beating Blissey, it's beating Blissey and friends, that's the great challenge, and you know, when those friends are things like Gengar and Dugtrio alongside Spikes, that's the challenge. Uh, and that's something beat-up Charizard usually excels at. Uh, so I was surprised to see the Sunny Day version instead. So in comes Regice, which can also blow up a Blissey and just generally be effective. So Regice is not too scary despite my Lax being down. I mean, my Metagross is chunked, but uh, Metagross enters on Regice, so that's really nice, because here you see the synergy between Suicune and Metagross. Suicune draws in special walls, nothing else, because non-special walls don't really like switching into Suicune. So the Pokemon that are comfortable switching into Suicune, Metagross comes in on them, and then it's going to fire off a Meteor Mash, and this time, the next time Metagross fires off a Meteor Mash, either something new is revealed, probably a water type, or something dies. And, uh, information is going to be really key, you know, because every turn is so key, important, critical, uh, critical like that T-Bull on Snorlax, R uh, rest in peace, um, yeah, so Surf, because Hydro Pump sucks, and, but, I mean, it's so necessary, I really wanted Hydro Pump here, I was talking to Jirachi about it, I was like, dude, I want Hydro, and he was like, eh, you Surf, would have been nice though, I mean, uh, because now, uh, Regice is another thing that can potentially stand in the way of a DD Mens sweep, but if it gets chunked into plus one range of Rock Slide or Brick Break, then that's great. If I had Hydro, well, yeah, okay, I could have missed, but it definitely would have been in range of, uh, plus one for that. So, Regice, Water, and then Mysterious Last Pokemon. Uh, so we know, I mean, definitely one Rockers is very likely to. I was thinking Swampert plus... Metagross, more likely, just because of the physical fragility of all these pokes. And Metagross is greater propensity to go one-on-one -on -one with Tyranitar as opposed to Jirachi, but I could see Jirachi too, even though I think that would be maybe pushing it a little. But I was uh, thinking Pert and uh, Loom. Or, no, not, not Loom. Um, uh, Metagross. No, that was what was on my mind. So, uh, it's still... And even if it is Metagross, 
then Heracross, if set up, you know, is just going to kill everything. I mean, that plus two Swarm Megahorn is going to destroy, you know, even bulky Metagross. So that's one thing, if I can... Uh... But I've, I'm, I was also thinking, Pert Metagross makes sense? I, I don't know, though. Um, maybe I, I was overthinking it, because I tend to do that, but... Uh, like... Lefty's List Charizard as the switch there over, like, a Lefty's Gross... I guess if it's not Lefty's Gross, then it's something else. Like, if it's Agility Last to take advantage of Locked Rock Slides from Arrow. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking... But the basic idea is find out that Water and uh, the Rock Resist, and then, you know, find that plan, get Mens in later on to sweep, all that stuff. So, yeah, the Special Wall invites Metagross in, and uh, then uh, fun stuff is going to happen. So... In comes Metagross. Uh, Arctic, I think, is quite ahead here, so double switching is just going to be, you know, riskless. And because what if Suicune decides, oh, I'm going to make sure that this gets into range for my you know, my Mance or my Call My Sweeper or whatever, and you know, double switches to Charizard and gets surfed, and that was pointless and unnecessary. Because he still has a you know pretty healthy team capable of taking on Metagross. Because there's going to be you know that water, that steel. That can uh, tango with it. And, um, yeah, so no reason to get fancy, just stay in attack. I was expecting T Bolt. Uh, I was not expecting Hidden Power Grass. It's a good move on Reggie Ice. I guess it might have been used in place of T Bolt, so he could, uh, you know, Ice Beam, T Wave, HP Grass, Boom, I assume. Because um, he wanted to hit Swampert and it would still hit Waters decently. Because um, Swampert does get in the way of Regice, like, a surprising amount. It's one of the reasons Regice can be so frustrating to use, because it's like, all right, I'm going to bait in the special wall because my Ice Beam is strong, except Swampert kind of pivoted into me and is stalling me out, and it's, it's kind of stupid, especially with Spike support. So I like HP Grass Regice. Um, and it stings a lot less than T-Bolt, so I'm definitely taking it here. I mean, even if it was T-Bolt, I think it's fine, but... Now uh, either that the plan proceeds, uh, either something gets KO'd or I reveal another Pokemon. That Pokemon is revealed, it is Swampert, and it also does not have lefties. I'm like, alright, cool, sub Endeavor. Also cool because Suicune can switch into Endeavor Swampert quite well, you know, potentially multiple times. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to, can't get fancy, I was thinking... You know, I, I'm tempted to switch in, and but or to stay in and, you know, attack some more. Because if Swampert gets knocked into, um... If Swampert takes another hit from Metagross, it is in plus one, um, range of that, uh, of DD Mence. Alright, so I'm thinking, alright, I can... I just need to hit that pert once more, and then the Ment sweep is looking a lot more realistic. As Titar dies, Aptos dies, Charizard dies. Charizard is setup fodder too, uh, and uh, Reggie Ice probably dies. It's you know it's a very good roll, and Swampert is you know one more hit away from dying. So then I have to find out that last. I'm really thinking Metagross or Jirachi, and I have a plan to draw it out. So here Suicune can safely go for uh, Surf and uh, chunk Reggie Ice into Ment's range for sure. But uh, I have another plan, which is no way Swampert stays in here fearing HP Grass. Um, and just in general, it's like, you know, also I can call mind and, you know, unnecessary. Because Swampert's health is also not to be toyed with. Uh, it is crucial for this kind of team, especially if it doesn't have lefties. On this kind of team, you know, you got to watch out for those physical sweepers. Because, yes, uh, even a lefties list Swampert is naturally good against physical attackers, but it's you know, far from having good longevity, you know, let alone bulk. It doesn't have any bulk at all. Whereas offensive lefties, per, like, still has not only lefties, but also investment. So, um, yeah. Gotta uh, respect that. So, double to Metagross on the Reggie switch. Um, and Copenhagen Cowboy was amazing, by the way. Oh my god. It's on Netflix. Check it out. Anyway, so I'm thinking, okay, I can... Oh, god. I don't even remember what I do. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I think I, if I remember, I'm following my plan, which um, was... Because, like, the mashing into Pert, it, again, is cool, but I really want to find out what that last is. So I double to Magneton here, because Swampert is also going to run... Okay, that was... I did not click pause fast enough. Yeah, and so, yeah, that's why I said Loom earlier. I had that little uh, slip-up. 
uh, because I know it was Loom. But yeah, uh, which I was not expecting. But I'm thinking, okay, um, Regiice is not eager to come into Magneton. Uh, even with HP Fire, it doesn't love coming into Magneton. Uh, but, you know, it gets T-waved, and then, you know, it, it, it's a lot less effective because in offensive slugfests like this one, every turn is crucial and losing it. But even just, like, getting beaten down by T-Bolt and Sand just sucks because Magneton hits hard, especially if it's Magnet to uh, more likely KO Skarm, as it often does. You know, from 80%, uh, yeah. I mean, think of the Snorlax example of how much it hated switching into even non-crit uh, T-Wolf from Zapdos. I mean, I pumped it full of Spit FEVs and, you know, still. So, and, and that was a full health lack. So, you know, here it's not going to love switching into T-Bolt. So, it's very likely that that last gets revealed. Because uh, Magneton also chases out Swampert with the threat of being faster and timid, which I am not. But I am using the threat. Of, uh, I do have HP Grass, but I, I'm not, um, I'm threatening that I'm timid and faster. Because uh, he's not going to risk it. And that last can come in and, you know, it might be Zapdos or, uh, sorry, not Zapdos. Um, I would love it if it was Zapdos. Zapdos would get sacrificed. Um, and uh, then, you know, if Regis comes in, Regis comes in, fine, I can deal with that. I've got the whole Metagross thing uh, going on. But what I'm trying to do is bait in that six Pokemon, reveal that information so I can really formulate that plan around Mens and or Hera. Um, so uh, what I should have done, though, I should have T-waved because uh, I guess I was a, I don't know, I think I was a little paranoid of the Lum T-Tar coming in or something like that. But, mm, no, I don't know, I, th I think I should have, uh, I think I should have T-Wave, because I can force the situation again later, and then, you know, the T-Tar can't switch into T-Wave after, and then the whole Regice, because Regice doesn't want to come in, you know, Magneton beats Regice one-on-one, if Ma Regice switches into T-Bolt, then, you know, I just stay, I start T-Bolting, because it it's not going to kill me with Boom, Ice Beam is whatever, you know, it might even be afraid to click T-Wave because I can sub, I don't have it, but I might be sub, so, especially if I'm Timid, because Timid likes to run sub lefties a lot, so, yeah, if Regice comes in, I am welcoming that. I'm beating Regice down for Suicune's sake, you know, let alone Salamence's, you know. Um, so, yeah, I like that, and I don't think... But, yeah, I, I think it's likelier that that last comes in here and shows itself, and I should have T-waved to take advantage, to really make the most of that. Um, yeah, I... Because uh, if I T-wave, like, Jirachi or Metagross, then that's just amazing. You know, even if they wind up being Lum, that's still information. Like the Lum Metagross. That's still really good to know. Um, yeah, because that means like something like even if Metagro my Metagross blows up on uh, his Metagross later on, that means that that damage is sticking. So it's not like, oh, I boom and then it does 80, but it's really 72 because of lefties. And then, you know, it, it might be out of mens range, stuff like that. So that kind of information, plus the you know likelihood that T-Wave is really going to cripple something. Uh, what I really wasn't expecting was Loom to come in here, and I would love to have T-Wave that, but I went for HP Grass, just um, a little... Uh, I mean, the plan was good, then I was like, mm, I don't know, I, I don't want Lum T-Tar to do something dumb. Uh, also, this is my first tournament game, in like a, a serious tournament game, in a long time, so I was uh, really getting used to the ticking timer again, because <laughs> I, was, I was calcing things like a maniac. Um, yeah, so Loom comes in here, and I'm like, okay, the Sleep Fodder is Magneton, just because, um, yeah, I mean, because I, I want to just T-Wave it, and from, if I T-Wave it, then that's, because, okay, here, it's like this. Uh, if I T-Wave this Breloom, then Metagross outruns it, because my Metagross is bulky, all out. It's four attacks, uh, like, no speed. And if my Metagross outruns Breloom as well, then that's another Pokemon it completely dominates. So it destroys Regice, it's gonna beat T-Tar one-on-one, uh, and if I outrun Breloom and don't even have to take a hit from it, then that's amazing. So then I'm, uh, you know, Zapdos can't switch in, Charizard can't switch in, and, uh, if Swampert switches in, then it gets knocked into immense range, and if I do that, uh, and that is relevant insofar as now that I know the last is Breloom and not uh, Metagross or Jirachi, this means immense. If it sets up, the game is over. Uh, well, once I hit Pert, obviously, um, you know, and likely against Regice. Uh, so I'm like, all right, 
Metagross needs to beat as much as possible. So, uh, if I T-Wave Breloom, then Metagross beats that as well. And if uh, Metagross beats Breloom and stays healthy, that means Zapdos can't revenge it, which means Charizard has to revenge it. And Charizard revenging Metagross, once Swampert has taken a hit, of course, means that Salamence sweeps. Um, I'm also marveling at how badly Heracross uh, is going to destroy uh, if I can set it up. And one of the places it might set up is against a Paralyzed Breloom. Uh, because theoretically, all I would need to do is just, you know, sub down to Salak and hit a bunch of attacks. But if the Breloom is Paralyzed, then I have greater odds in keeping a sub. Um, uh, the, it, as opposed to it not being Paralyzed. Because if I can come out against Breloom with a sub intact, because I'm not going to switch to Ments on Breloom because it very commonly runs Stun Spore. So, um, if I set up Heracross against Breloom, if that becomes my path of victory, then, and it's paralyzed, then I can very feasibly grab a sub and, um, and get the KO, and then that's, that's even better. That really improves my odds. So just improving the odds everywhere. You improve the Heracross route, and you improve the Metagross into Revenge by Charizard into DD Men's setup route. Uh, so, T-Wave here, I wasn't, um... I wasn't expecting to be faster. I kind of had a feeling, because I, I was like, that that Hidden Grass, because I'm modest, that Hidden Grass did, like, not a lot, um, not as much as it should, because Breloom is frail, because I was like, that that seems a little, like, like it's got some bulk to it. So ordinarily, I'd be like, oh yeah, it's going to outspeed me, and I, I'll just sacrifice, um, I'll sacrifice Magneton to it, because okay, whatever. But then I was thinking, like, I, I don't know. Um... It felt bulky, so I, it felt also likelier. Because if it was offensive Breloom, like like super fast, then I would say, yeah, just sacrifice the Suicune to sleep. Sure. Uh, because it's weak and it's just, you know, death fodder for um, Charizard at this point. And um, the switching into Swampert thing, you know, nice, but not necessary. One of Magneton or Suicune is going to assist in the Charizard duties. Um, yeah. So, uh, but I saw bulk on that Breloom, and I'm like, okay, I think the likelihood that I actually outrun and T-Wave this is actually quite high. So, stay in, go for T-Wave, uh, and full para, okay. I'd still rather the Snorlax not get crit like that, but, you know, fine, we'll take it. So, now... Uh, it changes a little bit, because the Breloom is paralyzed, because you know, the value of Pokemon can change game, or on, game to game, on a turn to turn basis based on how the game plays out, so sometimes teams that don't seem so good on paper against others, then once the dominoes start tumbling and avenues open up, you gotta, you know, look where uh, it's heading and all that. Um, yeah, so now that the Breloom is paralyzed, Magneton fulfilled its function. Previously, I was fine with Magneton paralyzes Breloom, and then it's going to get slept, uh, and that's fine because Sleep Claw is active, and uh, the function is that Breloom... Uh, Magneton slept is worth paralyzing Breloom, but now that Breloom has been paralyzed for free, again, would have loved to have done that on the Switch, should have, uh, I'm thinking, okay, what's more valuable now that I can choose between Sleeping, Suicune, or Magneton? I'm thinking Magneton, because, you know, it can switch into Zapdos once, uh, it can take on Regiice. Uh, so, yeah, now Suicune is going to be the Sleep Fodder, so uh, that was helpful, for sure, that Paraful Para. Shouldn't have needed it if I had uh, stuck to my original plan. Also, timer, I was uh, really thinking about this one, and my timer goes down to 15, and this is going to be big, because I was not used to it after such a long time away. Uh, yeah, so Suicune gets slept, and now I'm going to go to Metagross. Uh, Metagross can take hits from Breloom because it's really bulky, but that's not really the purpose. The purpose is, first of all, um, uh, that we're proceeding with the original plan of Metagross will switch in and force Swampert in or force a KO. I mean, if Swampert wants to avoid get taking damage so much that it's willing to, you know, sacrifice Zapdos or Charizard, then, I mean, I'm fine with that. That's that's absolutely great. But also, more likely, is that Breloom goes for Stun Spore here because this 
style of team is screaming Salamence. And Salamence is obviously the most obvious thing in the world to switch into, you know, this free focus punch Breloom seemingly has. And uh, Breloom getting stun spored here, or Metagross getting stun spored is... Uh, okay, first of all, the odds of hitting stun spored, which is 75 through para, aren't great. Um, but more, I would much rather have Metagross paralyzed than... Um, and then Salamence, obviously. You can't have Salamence paralyzed. That You know, the game ends if that... Well, not necessarily Heracross can still do it, but yeah, much rather have Metagross... Or, uh, Salamence... Yeah, Metagross paralyzed than Salamence. Uh, even though I'm kind of hoping the Pokemon gods are still gonna, um... Take pity on my Snorlax and make the Stun Spore miss, or Breloom full para again, or something. Um, yeah, Magneton paralyzing Breloom is still really helpful. Um... But now it's more in the um, in the Heracross vein, as a, because I'm willing to take the Metagross Para, but uh, in in the event that it you know it doesn't manage to connect the Paralysis on Metagross, then that's really good, and the T-Wave has fulfilled its function uh, in that sense. But even if it hasn't, then it helps me pull off the uh, Heracross route, uh, which is potentially exploitable. Because Breloom was his Magneton answer last time, and might be again. So I can take advantage of that, and then start doing Heracross things. So, uh, Metagross comes in, and dodges the 75 Stun Spore in uh, conjunction with Para. Great, getting health back. And now here comes the Mash. And there it is, Swampert is in Ments range, so now it's just gonna be... Uh... <laughs> Getting that DD, and, um, yeah. Or, you know, setting up Hera, but, yeah. So, uh, gotta stay in and EQ, and, uh, my timer hits 10 here. Good lord. So, uh, EQ, and now, you know, it's gonna be, um, a, not a, well, not a non-factor, because the, the point is to prevent it from getting a substitute and a Salic boost, right? Um... Because if it gets a sub and a Salic boost, then that's bad. I'm willing to take the hit with Metagross as long as I can prevent that free sub. Uh, and he goes for a Surf as opposed to subbing, and... I mean, I I'm fine with that. Uh, because uh, if it is Salic and uh, gets into Torrent range, Magneton is a lot of special bulk, so it lives a plus one Surf. Um, or, uh, not a plus one Surf. Well, I it functionally is plus one, but, you know, Torrent Surf. Um... And this eats its Pattaya Berry instead. Now, since I was clicking at light speed, you know, not opening the time, or uh, not, you know, skipping through the animations or whatever, I did not notice, since I had 10 seconds on the timer, I was on super autopilot. Or not, not autopilot in terms of tunnel visioning, but in terms of I gotta click these moves before, you know, my timer runs out. So I, I saw the boost go off and I was like, that's Salic Berry, right? And this is a lesson in, you know, be better about your timer. Um... Yeah, one I never used to have problems with, but, you know, after so much time away from the game, I was like, oh, let me see if I remember how this works. You know, T-Tar's weak to Meteor Mash, I think. Um, yeah, so here I'm thinking, um, Metag or, uh, blah, blah. so Sacrifice Suicune, obviously. And I thought it was suspicious that, um, uh, that it just died to Surf like that. It died because of uh, Pattaya and Torrent, which is really strong. I thought it was weird, but I didn't have time to think about how weird it was, and just went to Magneton instead. Um, now, this could have been disastrous, but I, I was thinking about it after because, oh, what happens if um, if uh, if the Swampert stays in and just kills Magneton with uh, Torrent uh, plus one Surf? And uh, the answer to that is, well, then I see that it's not... Salic, and in s then I go to uh, Heracross, and then Heracross is revenge killed by Charizard, and then I set up uh, Salamence and a sweep. So, fortunately, th that whole plan still worked. It wasn't like the game collapsed if uh, Magneton got outsped by Swampert here. Um, yeah, but the. So. You know, functionally, the move was still covered both possibilities, even though it shouldn't have, because I was just rushing to make up for uh, 
for everything. But yeah, it lives the plus one or the torrent surf from Salak Perp. And uh, if not, then go to Heracross after force in the Zard. Because, I mean, unless it's Drill Peck, um, unless it's Drill Peck Zapdos, in which case then Metagross takes a hit. And uh, then it, it, it might get, you know, ugly or strange. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it, but it seems... I don't, I don't know about the Drill Peck Zapdos on a team with Regice and Charizard. You know, and possibly like an HP bug Breelum or something. You know, and an HP bug Titar very likely as well. I mean, possible, but you know, I, I didn't see it as especially likely. But um, yeah, he also is thinking, hey, I'm not going to let my Swampert die to this Timid Magneton as well, and I would much rather sack my Paralyzed Breelum. So, um, yeah, so here, uh, a Magneton is fine. Uh, because I'm, I'm just going to sacrifice it, then I go to my Metagross, um, and then force in Charizard, uh, or I can go to Heracross and start setting up, and, or, or you know, I can go to Heracross or Metagross, and either way, Charizard's going to get forced in it and Salamence is going to DD, but, uh, yes, Breloom is going to Sky Uppercut, and I go to Metagross just because, you know, health, and, uh, yeah, just EQ, take it out, cool. Uh, so, now Charizard's going to come in. And, because, you know, why sacrifice Zapdos if you're going to follow it up with Charizard uh, anyway? I mean, I guess then uh, Swampert comes in. But th even if uh, Zapdos uh, sacrifices itself to... Also, he doesn't know I'm not a... J Actually, no, I take that back. Um, it had to be Charizard... And all these scenarios, because, I mean, I guess it could be a T-Wave Zapdos. If it was T-Wave Zapdos, then it was something else. Um, but that means it's really not going to have Drill Peck, so that's relevant for Heracross. But um, he doesn't want me to agility, which is very possible, because if this... If he goes to Zapdos and it's not T-Wave, uh, and the Metagross agility is on it, then the game is over. So it had to be Charizard. And it having to be Charizard plays into the whole DD Men sweep plan. So, uh, Flamethrower uh, goes off, Metagross dies, and the plan is in motion as I go to All That Jazz, one of the best movies ever. It's, it's really grown on me. I'm sitting just a couple feet away from uh, my Criterion Blu-ray of that film. I love it, love it to death. So, uh, yeah, All That Jazz is in. And DD time. Uh, e I, I was calcing like before. Uh, how much? Because this Mens has Spadef. Uh, so, but it's max attack because I hate non max attack DD Mens. I think it's so bad. Uh, and yeah, so uh, I was like, oh, in case it like sunny day. Actually, I don't think it can even sunny day because I get, I, get uh, I get a DD for free. But earlier I was calcing to see how well it took like. Sunny Day, Pattaya, Fire Blast, and stuff, and it, it was fine. So yeah, uh, Zapdos gets sacrificed, uh, and HP Flying uh, goes to Regice first. And now Brick Break, some people were questioning this, Brick Break and Rock Slide have the same base power. I'm going for Rock Slide here, and I'm like, oh, but, but it can miss. Yeah, and I was calcing against uh, Max HP Regice. Um... Actually, I was thinking, I think I was calculating not just against max HP Regice, but max HP, and I believe it's 28 defense? It's 28, 32, something like that. Uh, which is necessary to live Aerodactyl Rock Slide at full health. And I thought that was a really important benchmark, because the Rock Resists are a Lefties-less Swampert and a Breloom. So, you know, Spike goes up, I mean, even without a Spike, an Aerodactyl is terrifying. Uh, especially because it gets free entry on Charizard. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, I, I was like, okay, this Regice has to have arrow bulk to it. Because um, otherwise, Aerodactyl is just, you know, it's the Texas Aerodactyl Massacre. And I, I was thinking, okay, it's still a favorable role to KO with Rock Slide and Brick Break. But I, I was thinking back to, uh, I was like, alright, look, if Rock Slide misses or... Uh, I would feel terrible if I I brick break and I don't get the roll. Yeah, you know, I was like, all right, if Rockslide misses, then you th you throw up your hands and say, okay, I I tried, right? But you can't 
you have to give yourself the roll and the flinch chance. Uh, maximize the odds. Also, the, um, the, you know, and, and obviously crit chance, uh, but, yeah, um, the roll, I, I forget exactly what it was, but it, it was something, like, it was in the 60s to 80s. I think it was 81.3 from 79. Technically, it's going to be a little lower than 79 because of the way Showdown shows its rounding. Um, but, uh, you know, you assume the worst case and whatnot. But um, the you, you got to throw in that flinch chance just in case. Because I, I feel like, all right, if the Red Ace lives at 3% and, you know, then that's it. Because then he's going to, you know, it's a double down. And if he goes to T-Tar or Swampert, then I can sub down with Heracross and win, provided I hit my moves. But if he goes to Charizard, then I I lose. And that has, um, and I'm not in control of that. Because all I have to do is Hera and hope he, you know, messes up. Because um, uh, the last on this kind of team can be, I mean, okay, maybe it's not that cut and dry. Because the last on this kind of team is very often DD Tar, and sending Charizard into that would be foolish. So not all was lost necessarily if I don't get the roll. Uh, if I don't kill the Regice somehow, be it through roll or crit or flinch. Because uh, if it, he thinks T Tar, then yeah, okay, it's likely maybe he would go to his own DD Tar instead, or he would go to um, actually DD Tar wouldn't be bad because if it's Jolly, then it's going to win the... I, I guess in, in that scenario, you, you go to your own T-Tar, you DD, and you hope you win the tie. Because um, it's going to be bulkless Lum DD-Tar on a team like this. So yeah, in, in that situation, then Heracross could sub down and, and win. Um, provided it hit its moves. But still, you, you gotta maximize those odds. Um, and, yeah. Twenty-one. Put it this way: the twenty-one percent flinch rate from Rock Slide is more than twice the ten percent miss rate. So, uh, to say nothing of the whole um, favorable roll to KO it in the first place thing, and you know, crit on top of that. So I was like, th these are better odds. These are much, much better odds. Um, yeah. Worst case, you just blame it on the Snorlax thing. <laughs> no, you always, you always. Do what you can. That's all you can do, you know, in this game. Uh, it's not always about the end result, or you know, very rarely is it about the end result, as so much as what you did in the game. Because even if you win, then there's stuff you could have done better all the time. Uh, some and sometimes you lose, and you know, there's nothing more you could have done, stuff like that. So just all you, you focus on what you can control. And here it was the which move to make, and I was like, I think the move is Rock Slide. So, Rock Slide goes off, and it hits, and it KOs. Wonderful. And, um, T-Tar has no chance of living this, because it is Brick Break instead of Earthquake. Thank God. I think it, it was an offensive... It was a Lum DD Tar. So, it was gonna be, like, Max Max. So, I don't think it was going to live that plus one EQ anyway, especially because it's Max Attack Mens. But, yeah. So, uh, Zard's Pattaya goes off. But, uh, yeah. Man, all that jazz is going to sweep, and that is deeply satisfying to me. So, uh, that this video is ending there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, but I'm glad this was delved into in such detail. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and you got something from it. Let me know in the comments about what you would like to see uh, more on this channel. And what it would take for my film to earn your donation. Um, yeah, so, and uh, check out The Last Days of Disco by Whit Stillman, a wonderful film. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Uh, check out All That Jazz, too, if you haven't seen it. Amazing movie. Um, and in the next installment of this, I will continue staring at my Blu-ray DVD collection like I'm doing now. I even got two VHSs in there. Um, and continue recommending them. So with me, you will always have something awesome to watch. So, thank you so much for watching this one, and yeah, uh, I've said it all at this point, and I will see you in the next one.